Um, so grab pattern pieces eight and nine, I wanna say. Nine is your pocket facing, okay? And what I say, eight, right? Eight is the front pattern piece. All right, so I'm doing, I'm doing a little bit extra because as you can see, I actually have my mesh, my, my mesh attached to my number eight. Um, it doesn't call for that, but because this is a, like a form fitting, um, and I want to avoid wearing spanks or <laughs> shapewear, I'm using, um, I'm going to underline my mesh to my garment. Okay. So that's why you see extra pieces here. So I'm not going to need the mesh right away. And also for my pocket lining, um, because it also is a, a body con type of um, dress, um, you know, the imprint of the pockets can be seen, you know, through the dress if you have, if you use um, the regular weight fabric. So I decided to go ahead and use my the mesh again for the pocket facings because this part is the part that faces um, the garment on the front. All right, so I just used mesh, but you could have used regular fabric. So that's why you see mesh there. All right, so what we wanna do here is, gonna put right sides together, this is doing. So you wanna put right sides to right sides. This one go here. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna pin it here. Okay, so five eighths of an inch seam allowance. All right, then you're gonna press it away and you're gonna understitch it. So remember, understitching is where your seam allowance um, is pressed away from the garment and you're pressing on your facing here. It's the pocket facing. Um, and you're gonna uh, sew close to that seam that you just did, but on the lining side, uh, about an eighth and an inch of, away, okay? Once you do that, um, go ahead and trim your seam and then clip into the curves, all right? Do that for both sides and come back. All right, so back from the sewing machine and as you see, I did a top stitch at a 3.0 stitch length along the uh, pocket edge. And, um, you know, my pocket was short for some particular reason. So I just, you know, added a little bit, did a seam and added, you know, the extra that I needed on. And as you can see, um, it's so lightweight that it's not seen from the front. There's no pocket uh, creases or lines that you can see. So that's the reason why I use the mesh. All right, so moving on, you're going to need pattern piece number 10, which is the yoke in the pocket. The yoke in the pocket, which is number 10. Out. All right. So, you know, you have notches and all that other good stuff to help align you. But this one for me is just mainly a, a look. A look and see where it fits and looks nice at. Hopefully I'm still in frame. It's pretty down some. All right. So, you know, you want it to have right sides, right? Okay. So that didn't look right. have some dots you have some notches I'll do one side so you can see I have a notch down there well, you can line that one up first okay. 
so your thing should basically look like so from like so from the outside right so what you want to do is turn it to the inside and your markings your notches here And all you're doing is attaching the pocket bag. And you're just attaching the pocket bags together because you're just going to sew that. Do not attach it to the main skirt garment. And so, so I don't have stuff flapping around. I typically just put a couple pins in that pocket facing so it doesn't go places on me. All right. So now. I'm just um, pinning the pocket bag itself. It is not attached to the garment, just the pocket bag. And one, one thing that I always forget to do, but I always tell myself I'm going to do, <laughs> but I always forget, is, um, is surge my pocket bag um individually but i always forget so if i were you i would do that beforehand if not you can do it afterwards so anywho so you're gonna sew just the pocket bag okay at five eighths of an inch seam allowance and then you're going to serge or finish with a zigzag um, finish along your seam line is there. So do that and do the other pocket the same way and come back. Okay, so um, what I did here is remember I wanted to have the mesh on my um, skirt panels as well. So I just cut out the forgot what it is pattern piece for the front not including the pocket so you can see that the pocket is not there um and i first i um basted it to the side seams and along let's see if you can see and along the top here so along the side seams and along the top so i basted it and then i went ahead and finished my side seams which you know, included, you know, the, the, uh, lining as well. Um, finishing that now it tells you move, you can move this to the side. Now you need pattern piece number 11. And again, mine has the lining pieces with that. But if yours do not, all you're going to do is join well, I would encourage you to finish your side seams, however you want to do it. Um, and then you're going to join the back seams together with the 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance down to your large dot here. And you want to reinforce that large dot. So you're just going to back stitch um, and then go back so you can reinforce that large that um, the back stitch. But you want to finish all seams. So the back. Uh, center seam and as well as the side seams you want to uh, finish those individually and then once you do that you're going to attach the front and back po <laughs> pockets front and back patterns together um, right sides together and um, finish the side seams 
uh, sew the side seams at five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Um, and once you do that, I want you to press all your seams flat and then open. Um, and then we will come back and move on. But what I'm going to do is basically that as well, but I'm going to do it along with the, you know, do the exact same thing, but just with the lining. So, but I'm not going to finish my lining seams. Um, so I'm going to stitch the back down to this um, uh, large circle. And then I'm going to place it on my back pattern that I do the exact same thing too. Um, and then just like I did with the front, I'm going to base along the side seams. And then I'm going to finish the side seams with my serger. Okay, so um, do all that and come back. All right, so moving on to, I believe it is 24. And so what you're going to do is have your bodice right side um, up, and I'm looking at the back. You want to have just the fabric midriff available. You want to just tuck in the the um, lining midriff. You don't want to capture that, okay? Um, and then you're just going to stuff your um, skirt portion um, over top of it or stuff your bodice, I should say, inside of it. And so you want to put right sides together and I will be matching up my back first. Just leave there. And just you're going to pin all the way around. All right, and then you're going to stitch at five eighths of an inch seam allowance. Um, let's see. Uh, and then I want you to press the, the, the seam allowance up toward the bodice. And then on the inside, you're going to pull the lining portion over top the bodice, I mean, over top the um, skirt portion. Um, and you're gonna cover that up. And so that's where that um, fold over to cover it up comes in. And they want you to slip stitch that one. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna slip stitch that one. Um, all right, so go ahead and do that and come back. So first, remember to pin all the way around, keeping the lining portion free. All right, so pin and then stitch at a five eight seven inch seam allowance. You're gonna press you're going to press the seam up toward the bodice and then looking at the inside of the garment, you're going to pull down the midriff lining to cover the skirt portion, you know, and all the seam allowance to cover that up and, um, you know, fold it, fold it under so you have a, a clean edge and then you're going to slip stitch that um, lining to the, the skirt portion. So go ahead and do that and come back. Okay, so this is me looking at the inside of the dress. And just so you know, and maybe you want to do it as well, I did a row of stitching, you know, attaching the skirt to the bodice at five eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then I went in a quarter of an inch toward the raw edge and stitched it again because, um, you know, one, could because of the skirt could be heavy weight. So you want to put some extra reinforcing stitches there and then because of mine i actually have the lining too so on top of that it's more weight so i did two rows of stitching all right so now looking at the inside this is your lining so what it wants you to do is basically press your seam up your skirt seam up toward the bodice um if you want because you do have three layers in here if you want you can cut down one but Oh, I have three. I'm sorry, you may only have two. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, so this is why I do not um, cut, like they say, press under and cut the lining portion um, because I just like to look, do it, you know, here at the end. So I can just, you know, if I need more in one spot, need less in one spot, you know, I can just do it that way. So they, so here you just want to cover the raw edges there and you're just going to slip stitch. Keeping in mind, you're only slip stitching the seam allowance here, okay? Don't slip stitch into your fabric so you can see it on the right side. 
you only slip stitching um, you know your lining to your seam allowance and you're going to do that all the way around you know so just fold it and slip stitch it and then you're going to let's see you turn around to the back so I did my invisible type of thing here but um so you're going to so mine is already kind of folded over but you're going to fold that over um and do your hem okay so you did the uh so this should be five eighths because your seam allowance is five eighths so this should be five eighths um and i think they want you to do five eighths a hem here so you're going to do this portion first fold under press and stitch um, close to the raw edge here um, so you should have finished it so if you want you can fold it under again like that you know so five eighths and then tuck in the ends if you want to I probably won't um, and then once you do that um, fold up your finish the raw edge obviously um, of your dress um, or if you want you know you can just fold under quarter inch and then up to make a clean edge as well but easier for me just to do zigzag or you know I will be surging mine so once you get your finished edge there fold up your hem whatever you know you like you know I suggest trying trying on your dress because you may want it less than five eighths you want to make it more than five eighths um, you know but if it's more than five eighths you probably want to cut some off um, so you don't have to do all that and once you do that, you are finished with your dress. And as always, make sure to clip any threads that you have hanging, you know, that you forgot to clip along the way. But that is what the dress looks like. Of course, I would try it on for you once I finish doing the ends, the finishing touches. All right, everybody, have a great day. All right, so this is the reveal of Simplicity's 9261. All right, stepping back for you. First thing I want you to notice, look at the bottom. You can see that it's translucent. See light comes through it. Okay. Also, I want you to notice that it's bigger. And if you look on the back here, you see that I had to put some elastic <laughs> in the back because it, the skirt portion was just bigger than what it was supposed to be. But as you see, the bodice is it's a perfect size. Um, but yeah, that's me showing you that it's bigger than what it's supposed to be here. Um, so I put elastic on the bottom. Uh, well, this is me showing you, I added because of the deep V, I added a little um, piece there. Um, and then I'm showing you here that, you know, I added the elastic because it was too large, but it still came out great. <laughs> okay, so long time no see. <laughs> All right, so we're talking about Simplicity's S9261, right? So my thoughts on this. Um, one, was it an easy sew? Um, I would say yes and no. The lining part, um, if you're not familiar with putting in a lining, will give you a little bit of issue. Um, and especially the way that they tell you to put it in a little bit, it can be a little bit confusing. But if you're familiar with putting in a lining, um, then it won't be that difficult. But other than that, it's not difficult at all. It does have a lot of pieces, you know, because you have the side panels and the flat and a flange. Flange? Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, it's, it's not too bad. Um, as you can see, I had to put an insert here because that's another thing you should really do is look at the picture because it's right there. It's a plunging neckline, right? Um, I was thinking, ooh, it's cute, cute, cute. But if you if you really look at the blue picture, 
you know what I mean? You can see that it's really a plunging neckline. And obviously, I'm not trying to do that, not for me and not for my age. Um, so I put, you know, I just made like a, out of the same fabric, like a little triangle and, and hand stitch that in uh, for a little modesty. Um, let's see. Um, the bodice was spot on with sizing, right? So you picture size um, based on finished garment measurements, basically. And, uh, and the bodice portion was, was spot on, no problem. The skirt portion, as you can see, it's supposed to be, you know, kind of form fitting, um, but mine isn't. It's it's more of a like a straight um, skirt. Now I did add to my side seams a little bit because of my size, but I was still thinking it was going to give more of that peg type of look, um, but it didn't. So that's the reason why I put in the elastic on the back. You know, I showed you in the back that I actually put the elastic and that kind of cinched it in um, because it was really just straight. It was just straight and it was just too much. So that made me think that from now on, I will be, if it's a skirt portion, that I will be taking like around the knee measurement and mine is 45. So that's kind of like how you want your, your um, if you have like a pencil skirt, how you want that to fit. So mine is 45. So I will be taking that measurement on the pattern itself to make sure that my measurement is at least a 45 around that, around the knee area. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. Um, will I sew it again? Yes, I would sew this one again um, because I like the, the style, right? But when I sew it again, I would definitely um, just sew up that front plunging so I think you know it's at three inches I would probably sew it up to um, six or seven inches um, you know up I would just sew it more up so you know that the V would actually come here so it'd be here to here um, so I would do that and obviously I would take um, my measurement I would say like here right here I would take that measurement to make sure that that's like a 45 and alter it as I see fit um, I probably won't add to my hip measurement um, because it just obviously there's a lot of ease in this already built in even though the hip measurement when you um, differ the body measurement from the finish measurement is only three inches um, but it must be already some more um, design ease or just um, regular ease already built in here because it's much more um, that you don't need. Like you don't you don't need all that ease in here. Um, that's it. Let me know if you saw on this. Um, would love to hear from you and see any um, projects that you're currently doing, whether it's this one or anything else that you're doing. All right, everybody have a good Sunday. Bye-bye.